Hi, William. How are you doing? What a good dog you are. Can you sit? Very good boy. What a good boy. Yes, you are. Yeah, let's go. Here, William. Come on. That's the boy. What else can you do here? Huh? Can you sit again? Can you do it down? Very good. Very good boy. Okay. William, here, come. Come. Very good boy. Very good boy. What a good boy. Hello, I'm Fiona. And you just watch my five-month-old Irish Setter puppy, William, demonstrate the skills that he has learned over the past few months in his manners class. The training technique that I use is called positive reinforcement. For example, when I asked William to sit, and he sat, then I would give him an immediate verbal reinforcement, yes, followed up by a treat of some sort. If he didn't respond to my command, then I would usually ignore it. Because to say no, which is probably the most common word we use with our dogs, is actually a reinforcement because it's giving him, possibly giving him contact with his owner. So what happens when William doesn't respond to something I ask? Say he's distracted. Well, actually very little, unless it's a situation where I'm trying to get him out of danger. And that's why I had that emergency response that you saw in the video of come to make sure he does that. But that's not always the case when positive reinforcement is used as a training technique with wild animals. For instance, marine mammals such as the killer whale. In fact, that was the situation that happened in February 2010 when a trainer asked one of the killer whales to do a maneuver she, and he apparently didn't hear her, her whistle, did not perform it and did not get his snap. Apparently he was upset because the first chance he got after that, he grabbed her pulled her underwater and drowned her. She died. Now, killer whales, they're actually the largest of the dolphin family, are the top predators on Earth. They kill white sharks. They, their typical prey are seals or sea lions, for example. And what they do is they actually grab the animal with their teeth, they have about 250, and pull them under water and drown them. This was not an isolated incident at SeaWorld and or various sites at SeaWorld. And if you want to, you can see footage of the attacks of killer whales on humans and even deaths over the past 30 years or so. In fact, Telecom, who killed the trainer at SeaWorld in 2010, had been involved in the death of two other humans over a 20-year period. When you watch the video footage, you'll see something like this. It looks, it, this is about the ratio of the human to the killer whale. The killer whales are about the size of an elephant. And I have a friend who actually did see this pair, the trainer and the whale, at SeaWorld before the incident occurred. And I, I told her that when I watch that video footage, it scares me to death. And I wondered if she felt that way when she saw the live performance. She had to think about this for, the while, for a while, and she told me, no, actually she didn't, because she didn't know about the previous two deaths that that same whale, killer whale, had been involved in. And she said if she had, 
she wouldn't have put her daughter, her four-year-old daughter, in that situation. So why do people take their children to these live exhibits? When there's been information for quite a bit period of time that there have been a various attacks, they're fascinated by the animals. What would happen if people just stopped supporting the live marine shows? Well, what would happen is no more killer whales would be bred in captivity because it's illegal to capture them anymore. They don't live very long in captivity anyway. In fact, 80% of the killer whales that were either captured earlier or bred have died in the past 40 years. And these are animals that can live to 80 years old in their natural habitat. The cause of death in captivity is usually infections from tooth decay because they are chewing on the concrete of the pools and on the metal rods because they're bored. So the solution is to keep the animals busy because they are quite intelligent, which is characteristic of most predators. They have to be more intelligent than their prey. But being busy can get carried away too in that the animals are each have to produce five to six different shows a day because they have to draw in a lot of an audience in order to pay for their expenses. They're very expensive animals to keep. So what would happen if the public just simply stopped supporting these shows? Well, the remaining animals would live out the rest of their lives in captivity because it's not probably possible for them to be returned to the wild, or even live, especially when they were bred in captivity and there was a East Coast bred to a West Coast killer whale, animals that are really considered hybrids and they're genetically different, they would never be accepted actually in the ocean. Furthermore, they don't even know how to eat live, live fish. They're not scavengers in the wild, and they have to actually be force-fed when they were captured dead fish. So gradually in time, the shows would stop and, and the whales would live out their lives. I can understand why young children are fascinated by wild animals. I was too. In fact, 60 years ago, I learned a lesson about the problem of keeping wild animals captive. I was just eight years old and I lived in a rural area around a lot of farms. And the den of red foxes was found, presumably because the mother had been shot by a farmer. The foxes were given out to the neighborhood children. This would be illegal today. And most of the children raised them in dog pens outside. But not me. I brought my red fox into the house and raised it with my Irish setters at the time. I house trained the fox. And it was actually was very easy to do because they're quite smart animals. I would let the fox out, I called her Wendy every day, and she would come back. And then one day she didn't come back. I worried for a long time that she might have encountered the same fate as her mother. But the other thing I learned, and that applies to this situation, is that my wish to be with her was much greater than her wish to be with me.